We've all seen animation and know that it's created by technology, but technology isn't magic. So how does it actually work? I visited the Carnegie Science Center and here are four things I learned about the science behind Pixar. You're watching iHeart STEM. Today we'll tackle one STEM topic I learned from experts. Just four key questions with each answer under one minute or less. When a character is created in animation, it starts with a sketch and then is usually turned into a clay model, which is a 3D model of what the character might look like. But a computer can't use either of those. So what happens next? A 3D modeler will use a computer program with an XYZ axis, so three separate planes, to create a 3D image. And they do this by something called coordinate geometry. By mapping out coordinates of the shape, they turn the shape into numbers. So they connect all of the coordinates, which is the outline of the shape in a digital wireframe, and therein becomes your character. Now, coordinate geometry is also used in other parts of animation, like how they actually create the smooth surface of a face or skin. In the case of animation, you're using technology to mimic real life. But what gets really fascinating is all the basic things in life that don't exist in technology and have to be created. So take a shadow as an example. Now, in order to visualize this, I want you to look around the room and I want you to find the shadow of something that's being projected onto the wall. So maybe it's the shadow of your TV, maybe it's the shadow of your lamp. Now, when you look at the wall itself, what's really the happening to the wall is the wall looks like it's actually different colors because of the shadow. Well, in animation, in order for things to look realistic or 3D, the same thing has to be replicated. So when we see certain colors, we actually are probably seeing multiple colors. In the case of the movie Up, what happened is when you look at the balloons, in the exhibit you could see in a blown up image of the red balloon, which is not just red, it's actually red, orange, and purple to create the shadow. When I was an engineering student, I had to take a simulation class. And one of the things we had to do in class was we had to study something like a doctor's office waiting room or the line at a grocery store. And we had to figure out what mathematical formula represented how people were moving in and out of that situation. We then put the formula into a simulation program and bada bing, I didn't even know I was actually doing what they do in animation. So for the movie Brave, they wanted to make the main character's hair very curly, long, and very free flowing. But to do that, they had to figure out by studying natural hair, what actually represents natural hair in a mathematical formula and they realized that springs are very similar. Now, a basic spring still didn't hold up to things like gravity and how they wanted her to be moving in various scenes. So they took a spring, put another spring inside of it. Three years later, a whole bunch of math, her hair is actually made up of over 110,000 springs. Whew, made it. A Bug's Life was Pixar's second film, and this introduced a new challenge because in a Toy Story, they didn't have to do any replication of Mother Nature. Now, just take a little glance outside your window. You probably see a beautiful tree or you can see grass or something like that. When you see grass, think about each of those blades of grass needing to be replicated in order for it to look natural. And that was the challenge that Pixar had. So what they realized though, is a lot of things in nature actually represent different shapes or mathematical formulas. So taking a blade of grass as an example, a blade of grass actually looks very similar to half of a parabola. So they could use the formula for a parabola, change it up so some are wider, some are taller, some are more inverted or not, and that is how they created all of the grass in A Bug's Life. Now, they have had new challenges since then. Brave introduced all sorts of new challenges, so they use new technology now. But I want you to look outside nature and see what shapes you see. How incredible is animation? Now, if you get a chance, I highly recommend taking a trip to Pittsburgh to go see the exhibit, The Science Behind Pixar, at the Carnegie Science Center. I'll see you next week.